welcome to this week's drone video. This week we're going to be talking a little bit more about the FQ36 and FQ35 Shark Spark toy drones. I did an unboxing last week and this week we're going to look at how to set it up, how the apps look like, as well as the battery life. The first thing you want to do is to make sure you have charged up the batteries. For the FQ36, the batteries look like this and it also comes with a charging cable. You're going to plug the battery into the charging cable and then the USB into a phone charger or your laptop. When you plug this in and the battery is charging, the light on the USB will be off when it is charging. So for the FQ36, the light on the USB head will be off. When it is done, the light will turn back on and then you'll know that your battery is done charging. Always make sure you do not overcharge any of these light bulb batteries. For the FQ35, this is the battery, how it looks like. And it's nice because it's in the encasing and it's plastic. All you have to do is plug any USB into the charging port and there is a built-in LED light on the bottom. This is actually the opposite of the FQ36. So the FQ35, when it is charging, there will be a LED light. It actually says it in the manual, so I'm just repeating what it says in the manual. There will be a light that turns on. When it is done charging, that same LED light will actually dim. It will not turn off. So when you plug it in, you'll see that it's a very bright red light. And then when it's done, it will be a dimmer red light. So I, I have an example for you right here. There's something I like about these two toy drones that I have not seen with previous toy drones that I have reviewed as well as bought. Um, it actually holds your phone. It comes with a phone holder. So for the FQ35, it comes with this little phone holder where you can actually put your phone and see the FPV while you fly. So there's an app. We'll talk about that in a little bit uh, about downloading and which app it is. Um, but while you fly, you can actually see um, the FPV and for the FQ35, this is the remote that looks kind of like a Mavic remote. It's a little drawer that is in the bottom. And you just put your phone right in here. And same thing like the FQ36, you're able to, as you fly, see the FPV. So what I like about these two drones versus the Tello so far, is that it actually comes with the physical remote. The Tello, you have to buy it separately, and I believe it's about $100 just for the remote. So if you just want a quick toy to play around with, this is a good option for you instead. So now let's get into setting up your apps. This is the confusing part. So even though these two drones are from the same company, it actually is two different apps. So first, let's talk about the FQ35. The FQ35 will come with an insert and it has barcodes for you to uh, scan or you can actually just search in Google Play Store or the App Store for the app name. The app name is HTUFO. So the first thing you want to do is go to the Play Store and search for the app for the drone. As I mentioned before, it is HTUFO. You will open up the app and install it onto your phone. After you have installed it, turn on your drone and it will start flashing. Open up your Wi-Fi and you will see the Wi-Fi hotspot. So connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot. And once that is done, you can open up the app. Once you're in the app, you just hit the power button and it's going to now connect to the drone. And as you can see, you get the view of the drone. From here, you're able to take pictures, record, as well as uh, turn the display on and off. But because you have a remote, that doesn't really matter. There's also more options. So you'll see you can calibrate and um, you can also turn the lights on and off for the drone. And the app is very straightforward. It does look different than the Tello app. Um, the Tello app is a lot more refined, but I'm sure that Shark Spark is working towards unifying everything together for all of their drones. So that is the FQ35. Just to also let you know, 
if you leave the drone on for too long, it actually turns off by itself and it will stop emitting the Wi-Fi. The next app that you have to download for the FQ36 is called the FYD FPV camera app. It is also in your Play Store and you just search for FYD FPV, install it, and once you have it installed, then we can turn on the drone. So it's the same deal, you turn on the drone and you connect to the Wi-Fi that it will emit. The instructions will tell you what the name of the Wi-Fi is. So you're going to connect to the Wi-Fi just like the FQ35. And once you do that, you can open up the app. And I just wanted to point out that in the app, sometimes it might show uh, Chinese to you, but there's a little toggle on the left-hand side. The bottom one, if you switch it over, it changes it to English. Uh, I didn't find that anywhere in the information, in the uh, manuals, and I just figured it out just by playing with the app. So if you do want to uh, switch it over to English, there's that toggle. Everything else in terms of the UI is very similar to your FQ36 app. Um, you have the photos and video buttons on the top, and you also have a menu button on the right hand side where you can calibrate as well as do FPV view and so on. So the apps are pretty much the same kind of app, but they're two different apps. So as I mentioned, I think they are going to try to make everything uniform just to make it easier for all of the um, people who are buying their drones. So now let's move over to the battery life. The battery life for both of these are as advertised. I want to mention that right away. So I ran both of these drones indoors. Um, yesterday it was kind of windy, so I didn't really want to do it outside. Uh, but these two drones are as advertised. So with the FQ35, the advertised battery life for this is about nine minutes. Um, with my test, I got it to run from connection to all the way just uh, end of battery at nine minutes and 17 seconds. I was flying this around inside my house. If you remember from my unboxing video, it is about the size of a Mavic and indoors it was a little bit dangerous. So if you can see in this little time lapse video that I'm showing you right now, um, you'll see it kind of fly around a little bit. And I did have to pay attention um, while I was flying this indoors. With the Tello, I just kind of let it go and it was able to stay in the same spot for the most part. So. With this drone, I did notice that you did have to um, move it a little bit just to get it to stay around the same area. Um, in the 9 minutes and 17 seconds that I was able to get it to fly, for the most part, it was stable. Um, it didn't really make any sudden movements and the inputs from the remote had no lag, so it was uh, pretty instant um, when you were using the remote and the drone. Near the end of the battery life though, it started to get a little crazy. I think it was just trying to use up all of the battery to keep the propellers moving, but it just kind of flew around a little bit and then at the end it just kind of plopped down. So when you do use this, pay attention to the lights at the back of the drone. It will start flashing and I would suggest landing right away. I did find that the FQ35 was a lot more stable than the smaller brother. I didn't really have to fix it too much to get it to stay, but because it was so much larger, I was really afraid of someone walking in into the room while I was filming this and, you know, getting hurt. As for the FQ36, the smaller one, um, it did get affected by prop wash a lot easier. It was moving up and down a little bit more as well as side to side. It started to drift, I think it's from the prop wash as I mentioned, and I did have to fix this a lot to get it to stay in the same spot. Uh, the Tello, like as I mentioned before, kind of just took off and let it stay there and it just kind of flew. But if you are practicing, this is actually still a pretty good alternative to the Tello. This drone is still a lot more stable than any other toy drones I've had. And this is pretty good for the price that you pay. It comes with a lot of extras, the remotes, and everything you need to play with this drone. The battery life on this FQ36 is also 
just as good as the Tello. I believe the Tello I got about 11 minutes and this one I got 11 minutes and 48 seconds and I was just kind of testing the battery life indoors. So this is definitely very comparable and cheaper than the Tello. So when I compare these drones to other ones that you can buy pretty much that are in the same class, I do recommend these. Um, they're stable for what you pay for. Um, you get good battery life for it and they are as advertised. For a lot of toy drones, you don't know really what you're going to get, but Shark Spark actually gives you all of that information right there. So you don't have to worry about, oh, will this actually fly for 10 minutes? It actually does. So I want to do another video on the footage, pictures and videos that I can get from these drones. I am waiting for a nice day to go out so that I would be able to fly these two because it's safer that way. So if you guys are interested in that, please let me know down below. And I want to thank you guys for watching. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.